And then I'm going to discuss a comment that somebody made about how I only show the good stuff of reselling and not the bad stuff. Hello everybody, welcome to Commonwealth Flipper and welcome to the Commonwealth Cabin. This is really, really odd for me. This is really, really different, as you can see, because I'm dressed a little different too. One reason is because it's raining outside and because it, actually it's a little chilly this evening and it's a Saturday night. I almost never pick up a camera on a Saturday night. It's my day, it's my night to get some work done and to prepare for the coming week. So I had two questions that I wanted to answer since I haven't been doing Q&A videos lately. I haven't had too much time since I'm back at school. And then the other was a comment. So one question was, how in the world do you keep selling so much stuff and listing so much stuff when you're back at your full-time job? And then I'm going to discuss a comment that somebody made about how I only show the good stuff of reselling and not the bad stuff. And then somebody asked me about the antique booths because they haven't been watching long. And they said, what are these booths you always talk about on Commonwealth Picker Channel when you're out garage sailing? And how do you work that system in because you never show that? And I used to do videos on those. So I'm going to show you the system there and a bit of the system here for garage sailing as well. It rained here today, so I didn't go out garage sailing, which is painful. But it's actually a good thing every once in a while so you can get everything in and processed and take some pictures. So first questions first here, and that is, how do I keep selling so much stuff? So... First is, it's because I listed a ton during the time that I had off. And second is, I created systems. I try to create systems that work and that I'm used to and that become habit. And so normally it would be garage setting on a Saturday, bringing in a good deal of that stuff in here, making it so that I can't function unless I get it processed Saturday night. And the second thing I'll do is I'll take a tote or maybe two inside and I'll put them in there, and those are kind of my uh, my nuts that I'm squirreling away for winter time, for when I have a little bit more time during a couple of breaks, and, and of course Christmas break, and then I'll uh, hopefully get through all that in the winter time before spring comes again. That's typically what I'll do. I'll turn this camera around for just a second. I'll typically have a lot of stuff in here. This is not much at all, because this is from last week that I still haven't processed everything. And so normally I'll have two totes, a couple bags in here, and I'll start to process the stuff over here. And I'll just do an assembly line, and I'll bring one thing over. I'll take pictures right here, and then I'll bring it back here and put it in one of the SKU um, totes, the license plate totes. And I'll just keep going. I think a minimum of 30 pictures for a Saturday night, and I try to get 50. And if I can get 50 pictures in, along with Blue Ridge Mama doing some herself, we can usually get 50 to 70 listings up a week. But if I don't get the pictures done on Saturday night and I haven't processed all this stuff through on a Saturday night, it's going to make the coming week difficult to get listings up and to function and move in here because by Sunday night, I'm doing videos over here and I am shipping over here. So this can't be creeping out into the rest of the cabin. And this is pr a pretty good amount of space. It's why I designed it the way I did. I designed it with the system in mind. There's only a couple things I don't like about the system yet, and I'm working on those, and I'm going to get those ironed out. But to me, to create habits and create systems is how I do it. I do the same thing during the course of a day. So if I have all these pictures that I can predominantly get done on Saturday night, I can take a little bit of a break Sunday until Sunday evening, Sunday night, and then we'll get back to work in here. So I like to have that time off. And this doesn't really bother me. Saturday nights I enjoy. I enjoy being in here. I don't mind taking pictures. I like watching. I have thrift mine on right now. But I watch different folks in here while I'm doing my picture taking in here. And I try to, to answer some comments from time to time as well. The second thing is that comment. And the comment is, hey, I only show the good stuff. That's really not true. It's tough. I mean, how do you show shipping? Other, than, You know, I've made tons and tons of shipping videos. And shipping takes a lot of time. Most resellers who sell a lot begin to hate shipping. But for me, it's not that big of a deal, especially because a lot of times Blue Ridge Mama comes in here, the kids come in here, the dog comes in here, sometimes the cats are in and out, and we get a lot of stuff done and it goes pretty quick and it's kind of a good little family time. But I don't purposely show things just to say this is the greatest thing in the world. Reselling is difficult, it can be tedious. 
I just happen to really, really enjoy it. So maybe that's why they, they assume that it seems so uh, so easy. It's not easy and you better be disciplined or you're gonna end up with piles and piles of junk everywhere, which some of you resellers know how hard it is out there. And all of you resellers who resell all the time, whether it's full-time or part-time, you know that you have to put in the work to make the money. It just happens to me to not feel like a lot of work to me. So anyway, that's the answer to that question. But I did wanna answer one more question really quick and that's about the antique booths. And I'm sure we will have an antique video coming out pretty soon. But when I bring stuff in from garage sales, I'll separate it. The pile I just showed you is the pile I need to process. And then these two bins are where I put the things that are going to end up in the antique booths. And then the bin back there and the space underneath for bigger things. Once they have been priced and I'll price something, most of the media I price and then Blue Ridge Mama prices everything else. And then we'll put it in that tote right there. When we have a full tote, we'll go down to the booths and fill them up. Hopefully, if things in the booths are selling, we'll fill them up. All right, so there's just a couple things I wanted to address before we show you what sold this weekend, and that's coming up in like three seconds. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody, again, and welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. And we've had, you know, it was some decent weekend, but sales have slowed a little bit for us. I don't know if that's true for you all out there. I don't know if it's something um, that's causing it per se. I think. In my case, it's because I'm back at school and I've actually worked pretty darn hard this last week and haven't listed like I usually do. But hopefully this week I'll get back in track and, uh, and do some listing. But we still had some good sales and I like some of these sales. Some things I just had to kind of push out the door. They were driving me a little crazy. But we did have two sales from, th we had a bunch of sales, but we had sales from three different platforms, which is really cool. Four, I suppose, if you count the Commonwealth Picker dot com store and reagan wants to come in and uh, say some thanks to some folks you know just she's not in here now so i'm just gonna tell you right now i'm proud of her she's doing a great job the sales that are coming across on commonwealthpicker.com she is handling and she's starting to be able to handle it all by herself with the exception maybe of me double checking a mug or two every now and again but we just want to say thank you for y'all i know you don't have to do that and that's money you didn't have to lay out there and Reagan's doing a good job. She's enjoying some of the profits and she has been enjoying, I'm teaching her now, how to distribute the monies to the charities as well. But we'll let her talk about that later. And let's talk about some of the cool stuff that's sold and the three different platforms we sold it on. All right, this is one thing, this like defines me. I don't know what it says about me, but it defines me. So I bought a backgammon game for, you'll oftentimes see me pick them up at garage sales and sometimes I put them back and sometimes I'll take them. You, can, you know, you have too many of the same type. You know, I sell them off by twos. You end up having way too much. But you can also sell them off in batches. So you get a set of 30 backgammon tiles and you can make a decent amount of money. Like $10 plus shipping is a fair little price. So if you can pick up a backgammon set for a dollar or 50 cents, you can make like seven or eight on the, on the little pieces unless you sell them off individually. Then you can make more. I'm just going to take you forever and then you're competing against me so don't do that <laughs> but if you find unique cups or just cups in general these are like mint greenish corduroy cups and then i put the dye with them and this sold for 18 dollars 50 on bonanza free shipping but this is going to ship out at the four i'm going to put it in a four by four by four box and it's going to ship out at the four ounce rate so it's going to be really cheap and I'm going to end up making some decent money. If you take the actual pieces themselves and this, I'm going to make close to $20 on that backgammon set. Now, this one's a little bit more unique, you know, that mint green corduroy. But you might ask yourself, why in the world are people buying this? Is it for replacement pieces? Actually, it could be from time to time. But I think what they're doing is they like to make their own boards. They like to be their woodworkers and they like to make unique boards for themselves and then they go out and buy these things and put them with their boards and then give them out as gifts that's what i think's going on so so anyways it's a thought just don't do too much of it because it's a pretty small market out there i don't know if i mentioned that sold on bonanza so it was listed on ebay sold on bonanza bonanza is awesome because it automatically delists off of ebay and i uh, love that uh, bonanza has been awesome it has been a bonanza for us here is a, a green, I don't know, what do they call this one? I can't remember, the emerald green, I think is what they call it, Sony PlayStation controller. And this one sold for $24, and it will ship out, I think, 
it creeps over eight ounces, unfortunately. It's gonna go out at a 12 ounce rate. I, this one is kind of interesting for me anyways. This was bought by a viewer, but the viewer didn't know they were buying it from me <laughs> until after the fact. And then they sent me a message and said, hey, you know, I was buying this. I've been watching you. I wanted something to test my games with. And then I realized that it was you after I bought it. So that is awesome. So it is headed your way. It's $59.95, I think, plus shipping on this one. And if it doesn't work by any chance, let me know. I always get nervous shipping this stuff out because I don't personally test it. All these game systems are tested by my oldest boy. And so in all the time that he's been doing it, I've only had one kind of questionable thing. And uh, that means I think he's doing a pretty good job. So let me know. All right, last time I did this, I dropped a bunch of games, so I didn't grab them all this time. There's 30 in here. Not the greatest titles in the world. A lot of times I'll take these games and put them in my vintage booth, and I'll sell them off. But I've had so many of them lately. Since we had that $100 buy, there's so many that we're selling them off two or three a week. But I have no more space to put them in there, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sell a big, giant lot of these that aren't really worth selling on their own. And I put it out there. What I thought was $50 plus shipping ended up being $50 free shipping, which is going to cost me $15, I'm afraid. That's going to cost a little less than that to ship these out. So instead of me maybe criticizing my boy for something he hasn't done, maybe I should uh, look at myself. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. I can't even remember what number this is if you've been following along. I think it's 15 times now. I haven't double checked and made sure. It's still an enigma to me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, so I have to double check. But nonetheless, this is all pure profit, so we'll still end up making about 25, maybe a little bit more in profit on these. All right, just the console and the power cord, $45 plus shipping on this one. Took us a long time to list that one, but it came from the unexpected jackpot sale, if you watch the Commonwealth Picker channel, and that puts us over the $900 mark right there on that one. So $911 so far on that sale. It's a great one. All right, this is kind of cool and I have the box for it. I got this at one, it hasn't aired yet on the other channel. This guy, it was all his own stuff. I'm not quite sure why he was selling it all off, but it was all in terrific condition. I don't know if you can see this up there. That Chevy 300 Sparking Speedway, I, I can't remember what I have it listed for, or even if I have listed it or not yet. But I bought that there. I think I paid $10 for that, and it's a really good deal right there. And this one, I think I paid two, maybe three, sold for 15 plus shipping. But he would sign up for stuff and send letters away, you know, when you get cereal or whatever, and he would get things back. And so they're kind of rarities. They weren't multi-produced. And so he had some cool stuff. I got a shark tooth hat from him there for, I think, two bucks as well. And so it was a fun little sale we're going to make some money off of. But it's a hauler and it's got the little car in the back. I didn't show this one to Turner because I think he might like it. And he's got eight million of the cars ones up there. So hopefully he doesn't watch that video. But this one is going to head out and $15 plus shipping. So we'll make like 11, 12 bucks profit on it. All right, I have one more sale in here. I'm going to show you really quick, and it came from Depop. The sale was on Depop. I had it listed on eBay, had it listed on Depop, sold on Depop, I think for $22, and I love listing over there. But that's something that I wanted to talk about for just a second, too. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube myself, and sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, everybody's out there just killing me. They're just doing such a great job. Uh, I watch over the years, and he sells on like every platform that's ever existed, and that, to be honest with you, makes my mind just hurt. So I have tried, and I've kind of taken this because I'm a teacher, and if I taught the same way I taught 20 years ago when I first started teaching, they probably would have fired me by now. I try to learn one thing. I don't use them all the time, but I learn them. And Mercari is an example. So I learned how to do Mercari. I sold two or three things on Mercari. I have two or three things listed on Mercari, and then I don't really use it but I know how to use it. So if need be, in the future, I can do that if I have to. Depop, I learned how to do it and I kind of enjoy it. So I have listed a few more of the right type of item over there and I'm gonna to continue to do that. Poshmark, I had my wife learn it and from her process, I've decided I don't really wanna do it. <laughs> so I don't have a Poshmark account, but that's okay because at least I know she knows how to do it in case that platform takes off and I feel like we need to move there. I have a feeling we're probably not. It's too tedious. 
and time consuming for both her and me. And then I stepped out and learned Bonanza, which is really not hard at all. And I have loved that platform because it's no more work and a few more sales every once in a blue moon. So don't get stressed out if you're a new reseller and, and looking at all these people selling on all these different platforms. Just learn one, sell on one, be content with it, be happy with it. And when you're comfortable with it, maybe branch out to one more and learn it. That's just my personal opinion. I don't think it's good to have all your eggs in one basket, but I also don't think it's good to make yourself crazy and just not want to do any of it. So take things one little step at a time, I think. Let me know for all you pros out there how many platforms you're selling on right now and why you're selling on those platforms. Is there anybody out there listening that sells on all of them? Is there anybody out there who's listening, sells on one, and doesn't want to learn anymore? Let me know in the comments. All right, back here is the Depop hat. It is in the Michigan hat bucket here. It's right in the front because I just put it there. It is a cool looking Daytona International Speedway hat, but it's that uh, satiny, silky type. I thought it would sell a little quicker than it did, and I ended up putting it on Depop to see if I could get the sale over there. And eventually it happened. But it's kind of a cool little hat. $22 free shipping, Depop. All right, we're going to head into the eBay cave, check out what's sold in there. Just two things, I think. Hey, just two sales in here and both to viewers. So this one is to Paris. Hi, I'm a viewer of your Commonwealth Flipper channel selling on Amazon and eBay, recently approved to sell on Walmart. Boy, see, there you go. All these new platforms, right? Amazon, I'm assuming FBA, maybe, maybe FBM, maybe both. Uh, recently approved to sell on Walmart. And they have an interesting platform and I haven't gone into a great deal of researching it just yet. But uh, would you be our official Walmart platform updater? and let us know how it's going. I appreciate it. Happy to make this purchase from you, and uh, we do appreciate it. And they are headed your ways. Dr. Demento's uh, interview of Jerry Garcia, along with some songs. So, hope you enjoy. Hey, right, this enemy is going out to Gabriella. She says, hello, Kevin, my baby, four months old, congratulations, daughter, Alexandra, and I always watch your videos. I teach history myself and it's great hearing your stories. I'm a part-time seller myself and enjoying going out picking with my father who looks forward to it every weekend. We love your family values and enjoy watching your videos with your beautiful family. Nevertheless, we have been dying to buy an in a man and put it up in our studio and we're finally making the purchase. The mug will be the next buy. Thank you so much and thank you for the story and that's that multi-generational connection is awesome that uh, family of pickers so let me know out there if you're part of a long line of pickers or if you're new to it i would say i'm fairly new to it we don't have a long line of pickers although my mom's got a really good eye out there sorry pop all right thanks for that i have a few questions that i'm going to try to answer in the next few days because i haven't been doing q a videos so if i told you i would answer your question i'll try to get to it in the next couple of days let's go back outside and see a sale maybe two out of the homeschool hustler store reagan wants to thank a few folks and i want to thank a few folks as well and i'm going to say goodbye from in here and we'll see you next time homeschool hustler with me here and we sold something out of your store and that is a what care bear cassette. it's a care bear cassette that's right it sold for just five dollars plus shipping but that's pretty good because we are in the pure profit. This is from the Mount Plushmore sale. And so we have made a bunch of money off that one. Let me show them to them real quick. All right, Mount Plushmore sale. We have made $1,945 so far after fees, after shipping. We have made $1,945 and that's going to add $4 to the total. All right, I've been telling the folks that you are in charge of the store and you really are taking over this store and doing a good job and I'm proud of you, but I just wanted you to be able to tell them how we're doing this. We're giving a dollar from each sale to different charities. Can you tell them the charities? St. Jude's and... Um, the other one's hard to remember the yeah. name. Children's Poverty... Children, I can't even remember it myself. <laughs> hey, it's at the CommonwealthPicker.com store. It's the one where we give money to a particular young man where at do you know where he's at Haiti. in haiti in this children's poverty network and the stickers a dollar from each sticker goes to that young man and then of course all the other sales a dollar each sale goes to saint jude's yep. and so we're having a good time doing that and reagan gets a dollar to save and she gets a dollar from every sale to spend as well and so you've been saving bunches of money and uh, people are kind enough to let us do this. You know, we could do what's called Teespring and we wouldn't have to do any of the work. 
but you wouldn't learn anything either. So <laughs> we're having a good time doing it. You want to show them what uh, people bought? We haven't even introduced this stuff, so Reagan thought we'd better introduce it. And these are the mugs, of course. Mugs. Yep, and we sold two of those to... There's been a few sales come across, but we just wanted to thank some of these early folks who bought them before we even really announced them. Stickers. Yep. Sally bought, I think it was Sally who bought two mugs, two stickers, and a t-shirt. She brought, bought one of the gray t-shirts. That's right. She brought one of those. And then we've had some more. I think uh, Virgil bought one, and there's been some other folks. But Reagan just want to say thank you, and I wanted to say thank you, and we really do appreciate it. Um, and we know you guys are going out of your way to do that for us, so we appreciate it. All right, you want to say goodbye?